take you? Uh, on the road to Euro. <laughs> Let's hope so. The Directorate General for Economic and Financial Affairs of the European Commission and the Romanian authorities organized a joint meeting of the Network of the Directors of Communication on European Monetary Union and the Euro of EU27 and the Euro Team Network and another conference on economic governance in the EU in Bucharest on the 9th and 10th of June. What are you doing today? We have a DIRCOM uh, meeting and tomorrow will be a conference about economic governance in the uh, European Union. And also I am dealing with the media relations. This is what I am doing day by day. What are the biggest challenges in this communication? The biggest challenge is to explain uh, in uh, uh, ordinary people language uh, what is happening in this field of macroeconomic uh, monetary uh, foreign exchange policies and to explain them what is about Euro. This is a very interesting issue for Romania. Uh, we established that we want to enter in the uh, Eurozone in 2015. So we'll have to explain to the people that uh, there are a lot of things to be achieved uh, in this short period of time. The timing of the conference is just perfect. We in Lithuania, in the Baltics, we are having a lot of questions regarding the uh, future of Eurozone. I'm as a member of Euro team. Uh, we are responsible for spreading the knowledge about the Eurozone, for communicating, uh, com communicating the changes and comforting people about the Eurozone, what is happening in the Eurozone, what are the main, uh, what are the main trends, the main threats and what might be the main outcomes. And uh, during these meetings we are able to communicate with the wisest men from the Euro, uh, from Euro area and to make contacts and to, to check what are the positions of um, other countries in the same area. What is in your view the most important target of the communication regarding the Economic and Monetary Union and the Euro? Well, the most important target is to explain uh, the policies, to explain why for the countries it's a good thing to be members of this euro area, and, and, and also to, that the people can understand why governments do certain policies and they feel part of a, of a team which is this euro area. So for those that are not yet there, well, they can see how they can prepare, they see the experiences of the others, and, and in that way they can be uh, kind of ahead of the curve in terms of preparations. What is the most important target regarding the communication um, about economic and monetary union and the euro towards the general public? I think what is important is to try to translate a language specific to this area, which sometimes is uh, sophisticated, technical, not always uh, related to the daily life of the citizens, into a more simple language. Providing examples, providing sort of success stories related to the use of euro. We asked the general public in Bucharest regarding their opinions of the economic situation and the future changeover in Romania. Hello. You are a taxi driver as well? Yes, of course. <laughs> this is my, my job. And how is the taxi business in Romania? Difficult? It's very difficult. Do you think it would be good for Romania to have the euro? It's good, but, but not now. I, I think n not now is the, is the moment to, maybe uh, after three, four years, mm -hmm. I hope it's better. What kind of uh, information would you like to receive in a communication campaign about the Euro? People aren't aware about um, what the currency change implies and they should also be informed, for example, what happened to, to other states that changed the currency and how uh, it evolved for them and if it's good or bad and they should be uh, 
aware of all aspects, positive, negative, uh, other examples. What is your opinion about the future Euro changeover in Romania? We are not prepared yet, first. Second, uh, the change in Euro I think will be, uh, will be a good step, but uh, it's still uh, far to talk about it. The most important thing is to be honest not to lie about the perfect future of Eurozone because every region might have any kind of turbulence and I don't think that Eurozone uh, would be, would be uh, something different from that. But to, to communicate um, and to, to, to explain to people all the advantages and disadvantages and to balance them uh, in the right way so that uh, everybody could not just to take take over the opinion of some other person, but to form their own. It is well known that practical preparations are a key point of interest on the route to the Euro and are essential to ensuring a successful changeover which will be well perceived and accepted by society. Well, I came here in order to participate um, in a meeting of the directors of communication and um, of the meeting of the Euro team network um, and my job here was to deliver a presentation during this meeting and what were you talking about Adisha? I was talking about a conference uh, that took place uh, in March this year in Warsaw it was a conference uh, co-organized by the European Commission and uh, Government Plenipotentiary for Euro Adoption in Poland. It was a conference on the Euro changeover preparations, actually on the practical preparations. Um, yeah. and, and my presentation was about the conference and the main conclusions uh, of the conference. And what were the main conclusions of the conference? Probably um, a very obvious one. Um, but but very important is just that we should start our preparations to the Euro adoption pretty early or early enough because it's a quite a complex process and there are lots of things to be done so it's better to start early enough another thing is that um, Poland as a one of the new member states um, can already benefit from the experiences of the previous changeovers. They cannot simply be copied, but they need some adjustment to the specific Polish needs. What are the main messages that need to be communicated regarding um, the Economic and Monetary Union and the Euro? The main messages is um, one that uh, single countries are very small in the worldwide context and that uh, being part of the bigger uh, monetary area uh, make them stronger and they can um, support uh, and get support from the others when things become difficult as we, we are seeing now for some countries and then they can um, also learn from how countries have for instance made reforms and they can uh, not copy because every country is different, but uh, see what they can get from, from the experiences. Why was it important for you to be at this meeting? You know, I think many countries, I don't know any country which was not anyhow affected by economic crisis. And definitely there was many lessons learned by the countries uh, themselves and also this knowledge was combined by the European Commission. So it's always good to know what is the this uh, more broad uh, European approach towards, I um, don't want to say results, but <laughs> lessons uh, from economic crisis and uh, how it is going to be dealt in the future. The most important is uh, uh, to be aware, yes, and to exchange the information the simple way of information because you know the society is important in fact at the last point uh, you have to have the decision and the acceptance coming from the society so uh, the, I think we need to look for instruments and for forms 
which are the best according to the society's awareness. I think Romanians would like to uh, receive information about uh, what can be done and uh, they would like to see facts. Uh, till now there has have been only rumors about this great change and how things will improve and will get better but uh, still nothing got better it got worse with the crisis and everything first of all uh, let's say economically speaking uh, people are really misinformed because uh, for example Romanians uh, have the impression that if the currency changes this will automatically raise their uh, quality life and for example salaries to the same uh, level let's say as in Germany, UK, any other European state uh, people should be really uh, precisely so to say informed that uh, a currency change doesn't imply this so it doesn't automatically raise um, the level of life so to say I'm not sure how to how to explain this but uh, people aren't aware about what the currency change implies and they should also be informed for example what happened to to other states that changed the currency and how uh, it evolved for them and if it's good or bad and they should be uh, aware of all aspects positive negative uh, other examples not only the the good stuff about um, a currency change. What are the strategies in communicating these messages? Well, we have um, different themes. So one, one clear um, way is to use the media, so either TV or other media, to to kind of reach out in a very broad way the general public. Uh, there are all sorts of tools in terms of uh, website-based uh, products, also targeted to different audiences. And then we have more the, 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 the kind of the personal context, which is uh, either organizing seminars or different types of conferences where you really try to get uh, selected people that can also be opinion makers and, and they can then play the role themselves to forward the information. You know, we have uh, seminars with journalists, seminars with uh, think tanks, these groups of opinion makers that they can uh, then be uh, chain in, the, in passing the message. Are you happy that these uh, meetings are taking place in Bucharest? At yes, the because, Bank? because this, this shows that Romania is on the right way. We uh, are a country which is uh, integrated in this club, the European Union, and uh, we show to the others that we want to achieve all the goals uh, the Union has in, uh, in uh, its front. Strengthening European economic governance, surveillance of fiscal and macroeconomic imbalances, and the communication of these issues in the proper way to the general public was an important focus throughout the conference. Two things are important. Number one, I think that the level of awareness for the Romanian public of the depth and breadth of these, of these issues is still uh, lacking, lagging the, the agenda, let's put it this way. And I'm sure that Romania is not the only country in this situation. So we need events such as this one to bring the public's attention to the matters at hand, debate them, and I'm pretty sure that this conference will be one of many events de devoted to this. We also need to raise the level of public discourse on this matter, and I think it was very important that both economic analysts and the media were present at the conference and could listen in and understand. <music> event that you just participated at and spoke at? Oh, well, it's a very interesting event. It's about economic governance in the EU. And this is related uh, to the Euro year. That, you know that the uh, Romanian uh, bank has an exhibition about Euro. 
and it's all about our uh, commitment to enter in uh, Eurozone in 2015. So we have to prepare all things and uh, uh, we have that people uh, to know very, let's say, accurate what it's about. In your view, why is it necessary to strengthen economic governance in the EU? It's a good question and uh, already we are uh, approaching a delicate subject. The convergence in terms of uh, competitiveness, in terms of productivity, will not happen by itself between different countries, as uh, it was assumed uh, some time ago. Uh, in order for this competitiveness and uh, productivity to to get uh, closer to each other between different countries, it's uh, it's needed for people to understand what are the benefits for them if, for instance, uh, their countries are on par with, uh, let's say, Germany or Austria or Netherlands in terms of productivity. Do you think it's necessary to strengthen economic governance in the EU? Well, I mean, that seems to be what the markets are demanding because, as you know, the, uh, there's been quite a lot of, of speculation against the the public debt, in particular in Greece, but also in Ireland and, and Portugal. And I think the response, uh, as we then, you know, are in the same currency area, the response will necessarily have to be that we have a stronger coordination at EU level as well. We asked our passengers regarding their personal experiences and opinions of the current stage of this financial crisis. Do you guys uh, feel the effect of the financial crisis in your life? Maybe mm. it's harder to find uh, jobs. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely harder than yeah, three that, years ago. Yeah. We were talking about it yeah. earlier. Three years ago, it was quite easy yeah. to find a new job. You could, you could change. change it. Was you, no it's problem. three, four months yeah. if you wanted. <laughs> right now, it's quite harder. <laughs> Basically, it's one of the hardest thing for. Uh, for a student or a freshly uh, graduate to get a job at the moment. Um, the situation right now in the country is pretty bad, uh, mostly they're cutting off salaries and pensions, uh, people are jobless uh, with the recession. Not only that it's really hard to find a job, but it's really hard to keep a job, to, the job that you already have, if you have it. Do you feel the effects of the financial crisis? Uh, actually, um, yes, we did and yeah. we still do. And how? Well, the, the profit is uh, lower. The clients are not going uh, as often as before in the clubs. They're not they're paying more attention to the, the money they spend. Both the Romanian and the tourists as well? or I think the Romanians more. And do you think it will be good for Romania to have the euro? Yes, I think. It will, within time, it will become, it will come along with the other countries in Europe. It won't be as poor as it is right now. optimist um, and uh, I hope that uh, all the changes in the in the economic governance uh, that are underway um, will have a good effect and a set that uh, it will enable uh, the EU to, to be stronger in the future. How do you see the future of the euro? The future of the euro, well for sure that of this measure uh, that uh, we talk about in this uh, re reinforced, let's say, economic governance will ensure a more stable uh, environment and a uh, more stable Eurozone. You personally, how do you see the future of the Euro? Well, I would actually uh, ask people to look at how the Euro is performing on the markets because despite all this discussion, the Euro is actually very strong, right? It is, uh, 
as we speak, uh, approaching 150 to the dollar, which is probably uh, even an overvaluation of, of the euro. I mean, a too strong euro, if you like, which of course could then be a little bit of a problem in relation to our exports. So the market seems to have a fundamental belief in the euro, and uh, I do as well. We strongly believe um, that the euro will be beneficial for the Polish economy. Um, to put it in a simple way, euro would mean uh, faster economic growth and this is what we want to achieve. Well, I think it is uh, quite amazing what has been achieved over the last years or so. I mean, we had a, a crisis, the market started speculating against some of the, the weaker parts of the euro area, uh, but suddenly we saw how uh, the EU machinery could suddenly take the big decisions, you know, about the big rescue funds, about uh, new aspects of economic governance, etc., etc. So um, now we'll have to see if it can work in practice. I mean, that is the, the critical point now. In Europe, we have to develop um, a, Europe, a European perspective, a European approach to how we deal with um, various, various issues. Because uh, in the end, we are in the same boat. If we want to stay in the same boat and, and defend the European project. Thank you.